All right, and this lesson what we're going to look at is functions and uh, their inverses. So the definition says if two relations are going to be inverse relations, if and only if one relation contains the element yx whenever the other contains the element xy. So thinking back to symmetry in section 3.1, what that's telling us is that these two relations would be symmetric with respect then to the line y equal x. Because if we remember that idea, we said that if any point x, y were on a line, okay, then that graph was going to be symmetric to the line y equal x, if and only if the ordered pair y, x was also on there. So, a couple things will happen in this section. One, you're going to be asked to graph some of our parent functions again and then deal with their inverse. Okay? And you're going to see some things that will make sense in terms of inverses, such as how x squared and the square root of x are inverses of each other. x cubed and the cube root of x are inverses of each other. Okay? Whereas the absolute value of x may be something that you're not quite sure about in terms of what its inverse is. Okay? So, when we go and look at this, this graph, of my parent function again. A couple things. We'll identify our transformations. We're going to go up three. We're going to reflect over the x-axis. And we're going to stretch it vertically by a factor of two. Okay, so the graphing of this function shouldn't be a big issue for us. So again, what I'll do is simply move this vertex up three and then I can deal again with the negative 2, kind of like my uh, slope. Again, we don't want to call it slope because it's not a linear situation, but it's that piecewise. So we're going to deal with it kind of like slope. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to make note of the xy's that I plotted here. Okay, So I plotted a point at negative 1, positive 1. I plotted a point at 0, 3. And I plotted a point at 1, 1. Okay. So there's my function f of x. Okay. Now, it's inverse again. If you remember, it said xy will then plot to yx. So what I'm going to do is simply switch my coordinates around. Okay. Plotting my new points, now I'm at 1, negative 1. I'm at 3, 0. And then I'm at 1, 1. Okay. Now, we're going to maintain that shape. So it's still going to be a V shape. Okay. Now, notation-wise, we talk about our inverses F. And it's almost like it's an exponent to the negative first of X. This is not fu function notation. Okay. It's just notation saying it's inverse of some function. It may or may not be a function. Okay, and that's going to be one of the questions we're going to ask here in a second. But we also want to always check to see, do I have a situation where I am symmetric with respect to that line y equal x? And so what I always tell people to do is lie their pencil down and look, does it appear that my points have been reflected across that line y equal x? There it does. There it does. If it's on the line, it's going to stay on the line in terms of reflection. So it appears that I have correctly plotted my inverse for this situation. All right. Now, we want to check and say, is it a function? Is my inverse a function? So there's two things we could look at. One, you could just do a vertical line test on your original function, or on the uh, inverse. And because of the fact that I intersect my inverse more than once with that vertical line, that would tell me that the inverse is not a function. Now, another way we can do this is what's called the horizontal line test. What the horizontal line test does is that what we're going to do is look at the original function. And same idea. If I intersect more than once on a horizontal, with a horizontal line on my original function, it's not a function. 
Some of the other cases, what we'll talk about is just think about what the inverse is and think about the parent graph and is that a function. All right, so just quickly with another example here, um, we're dealing with a function where it's y equals x squared is my parent graph. We're going to move to the left 3 and then we're going to move down 5. Okay, so just quickly going through that, we're going to go left 3, down 5. And hopefully some of these functions are becoming a little easier for us. Okay, we know because there's no stretch or shrink, we're going to go out one, up one. Okay, then we're going out two and up four. Okay. And again, what I'll do is I'll look at these ordered pairs. Now, if you were to make this table, as some of us do, that's fine. And then all we're going to do is switch our x's to y in here in a minute anyhow. So we have a point at one, two, three, four, negative five negative 1, negative 4, negative 4, negative 3, negative 5, negative 2, negative 4, negative 1, negative 1. Okay. So here is my original function. Okay. So now to go in and deal with my inverse what I'm simply going to do again is swap my points. My x's become my y's, my y's become my x's, and now I can replot my points. Okay, so at negative 1, I have one at negative 5. Negative 4 is negative 4. Notice how, again, we're symmetric with respect to line y equal x. When x and y are the same thing, same value, that we just stay at that point because we're eventually going to have that line going through that point. Negative 5, negative 3, negative 4, sorry, this should be a negative 2. And then here's that idea again, negative 1, negative 1. So again, if I go in and draw that line y equals x okay, and check to see if it looks like I have that symmetry with those points, this point went across to there, this one stayed on the line, this one stayed on the line, okay, and these points went across to there and also to there. So we're just checking to see does it look like we have that symmetry. So here's the function. Here's the inverse a function. So again, like I said, we could take the inverse vertical line test intersecting twice, so no. Or if we go the horizontal line test with the original, either way we can say no. One of the things I'll look at more is, okay, when we have a quadratic function, the inverse, okay, the opposite is the square root function which you're accustomed to just seeing that top half. And one of the things we're going to see here in a second is when we start taking the original function equation and transforming that into its inverse, you're going to see one of the things we have to do is the plus or minus part. So this is the plus square root of x piece. Down here, this is what we're talking about. It's the opposite. And the opposite, think about it again, is it's going to be reflected over the x-axis. Okay. So... That's your piece with graphing a function and its inverses. All right. Now, second piece, if we give you a function, find its inverse, then determine if it is a function. Okay. Well, because of the idea that we talked about the symmetry with respect to line y equal x, one of the things I'm going to do is start out by changing that f of x to a y. Okay. Remember, they both represent outputs. <coughs> Excuse me. We just talk about f of x because then we know that it's a function. Second step, we talked about how when it's symmetric with respect to the line y equal x, x, y reflects to y, x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my x and my y around. From there, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to solve this equation for y. So 
So first thing what I'd do is I'd bring the nine over and here's what I'm talking about, changing sides, changing signs. And now I'll divide the whole thing by four. Now, if I take this left side and divide four into both pieces, what I notice is that, hey, this is a linear function. It's in the form y equal mx plus b. Okay, so the only other piece that I may do with this is change my y then to that inverse function of f notation. Okay. Is it a function? No, well, because it's linear. Yes, okay. and we should be able to do that without graphing that equation. We should recognize that the only time we have a linear situation that's not a function is when we have a vertical line, and again, that's when we have x equals, so we're good here. All right, so quickly with this example. Now, I'm thinking ahead. I'm starting with a quadratic. Inverse. Well, the opposite of a square is to get a square root. So, same situation. I'm taking the f of x out, replacing it with y. I'm switching my x and y around, and now I will solve for y. Now, you've got to be careful here, okay? We've got to leave that plus 3 in the parentheses for right now. What I have to do is get that parentheses set by itself first. So I'm going to come in here and subtract 6 from both sides first. Because our goal, again, is to get y by itself, so eventually I have to get it out of the parentheses. How do I get it out of the parentheses? Well, undo the square with the square root. Now, here's a piece that you got to remember from Algebra 2. When you're solving equations, you take the square root of both sides. You're asking yourself what number times itself will give you that value. Okay, well, there's a positive times a positive, but then there's also the negative times the negative. So we have to do the plus or minus. That is the biggest piece that you have to do when we solve these things algebraically. So remember that plus or minus. And if you go back to the previous graph that we did, there again, here's your positive part. And there's your negative part. If I don't have both parts, I don't have the complete inverse of that quadratic function. And now we can finish it up by adding my 3 to both sides. Now what I'm going to do is put the 3 out in front. The reason I like to do that is because of the fact that, you know, if I put it behind the radical, sometimes we're not sure with the way we write it, if it's inside or outside the radical. So we want to keep it outside, so we'll put it out in front. Also, it's kind of similar to your quadratic formula form, where you have the op opposite b plus or minus that radical piece. Okay. Now, talk about is it a function. So we talked about how a quadratic, okay, we talked about square root. Well, again, square root was the positive part, is what you're used to seeing, but now what we just did is we added in the negative part. Therefore, what it is, again, is you've got a parabola laying on its side, which means you're not going to have a function using the vertical line test. Horizontal line test on the original would tell you not a function. All right, so good luck with this assignment.